continuing in the same way seekers and solitary existence at a point or the other certainly each seeker needs a solitary existence when you are fed up with the outer world its ways and means you seek a solitary existence it has been happening always that a buddha moves to the mountains a jesus moves to the mountains a mahavir goes into the caves why do they move to the mountains to the loneliness why do they become solitaries it is always that just to face their inner mountain immediately and directly a seeker moves to the mountain because the ego has been they have been living a life of ego and ego constantly seeks attention now there is no one to pay attention to you you are all alone doing everything for yourself no one comes to see you you are going to encounter your inner mountain directly in the society it is difficult because the whole energy is wasted in day to day work and routine and relationships there is not enough time and energy to encounter your innerness your energy is finished in encountering others and encountering the day to day life you are so much occupied and to come face to face with one self a much unoccupied life is needed we spend nearly 70 years of our life for others how much time do we spend for ourselves i am not talking about the time that you spend standing in front of the mirror mirror also gives you the presence of the other remember it is such a tremendous phenomenon to face oneself you will need all your energies it is such an absorbing job it cannot be done half heartedly practice every day or at least sometimes that at least for one hour you will switch off your phones you will not turn on to television you will not attend to the calls you will not talk to anyone you will just sit down in your room and see what happens how restless you are or how peaceful you are in order to live in the world you need attention you need work you have to make calls to the people you have to attend to the job business and everything and also what happens when you are alone you decide to be alone you cannot be so you pick up a book you said no i am not doing the watching the television i switch off my phones but i can at least read the book this is also giving the a way to your restlessness so you pick up a book no at least for one hour do not do anything just watch what it is happening no phone calls no television no entertainment no reading no internet you are just by yourself and to come face to face with oneself a much unoccupied life is needed remember it is such a tremendous phenomena to face oneself you will need all your energies it is such an absorbing job it cannot be done half heartedly seekers have always moved into solitary existence just to face one wherever they go is really not important just to face one what is really important is to make things unoccupied 
because in relationship it becomes complicated the other brings his or her miseries and mountains you are already loaded with your unconsciousness and then come the other with this with his or her unconsciousness you are already occupied with your unconsciousness burdened then comes the other with his or her own unconsciousness and then you clash the things become more complex then it is two diseases meeting and a very complicated disease is created out of this everything becomes entwined it becomes a riddle you are already a riddle therefore it is better to solve it first and then move in relationship because if you are not a mountain only then you can help somebody you are not burdened with your problems now you can help the other and remember two hands are needed to make a sound two mountains are needed for a clash if you are a mountain no more now you are capable of being related you can relate to anyone and there will be no clash now the other may try to create a clash but it cannot be created because there is no possibility of creating a clash or the sound with one hand the other will start feeling foolish and that is the tone of wisdom you can help only if you are unburdened certainly you cannot help if you are not unburdened you can become a husband a father a mother and you will be burdening others with your burdens as well even as small children carry your mountains they are crushed under you they are crushed under you it has to be so because you never bother to have clarity about your being before you become related or enter into relationship before you become a parent you have never bothered to attain to the inner clarity indeed that must be the basic responsibility of every alert being before i move in any relationship i must be unburdened i should not carry a hangover of the past relationships or past miseries i must be unburdened i should not carry any hangover of the past only then i can help the others to grow otherwise i will exploit and the other will exploit me otherwise i will try to dominate and the other will try to dominate me and it will not be a relationship it cannot be love instead it will be a subtle politics of domination your marriage is a subtle politics of domination the stronger one dominates the other your fatherhood motherhood too is a subtle politics look at mothers just simply watch and you will feel they are trying to dominate their small children their suppressed aggression and anger is thrown on them and thus they become objects of catharsis and by this they are already burdened they will move in life carrying the mountains from the very beginning and they will never know what life is possible without carrying such loaded heads or or conditioned unconsciousness they will never know also they will never know the freedom that comes with an unloaded being they will never know that when you are not loaded you have wings and you can fly into sky and into the unknown realm 
and God is available only when you are unburdened. But they will never know. They will knock at the doors of the temples as they do normally in their foolish search. They find nothing. Slowly and slowly all desire disappears and a new phenomena arises. A new journey begins, a journey of subtle politics, a journey of, of a different dimension. But they will never know where the real temple exists. The real temple exists in freedom, dying moment to moment to the past and living the present. The freedom to move, to move into the dark, into the unknown, keeps instead that is the door to the divine. But they will never know where the real temple exists. They will go on knocking the doors of the outside temples and miss the real one. The real temple is your freedom. The real temple is when you are dying moment to moment to the past and living to this very moment. You live this very moment totally alive. The freedom to move, to move into the dark, into the unknown, indeed. That is the door to the divine. That is the door to the temple.